Hey everyone here from Tunnel Vision TV and in this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to go from Maya 2017 to RealFlow and then back to Maya. So first of all here in Maya I'm going to click on File and I'm going to click on the box next to New Scene to create a new scene. And then very importantly I'm going to note my frames per second. So I'm going to set this to NTSC 30 frames per second. You can choose what frames per second you need and then I'm going to click on New. Okay, we don't want to save my current scene and so now we've got a 30 frames per second scene and I'm going to set my frame range in the sequence here at the bottom from 1 to 100. So just type in 100 and then 100 again there. So we've got that frame range. Alright, so now I'm going to create a very simple animation that we're going to export from Maya to RealFlow. Do our liquid simulation and then import that back into Maya. So under polygons I'm just going to create a box or a cube. Uh, let's just zoom in there. Uh, by pressing F on the keyboard. So I'm just going to scale this by pressing R on the keyboard and I'm just going to scale it out something like that. And um, then I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to my face mode so I can select the faces. I'm going to select the top face, go to um, edit mesh and I'm going to extrude that and I'm just going to change the offset slightly inwards like that. And then with this face selected I'm going to go back to edit mesh, extrude again and I'm just going to move that down. So we've got something like a um, like a bucket, um, something like this. All right, so that's fine. And I'm going to go back to object mode. All right, just zoom out slightly so we can see our uh, box shape. So now I'm just going to add a very simple animation to this object, just like a rotation, something like that. Um, so with that selected, I'm going to go to my first frame. And uh, then I'm going to click on the P cube here so I can see my rotation parameters. And I'm going to right click on rotate and I'm going to set a key and then I'm going to enable auto key. So here at the bottom just make sure this icon here next to the um, little running man. Just make sure that's selected. And then I'm going to go to frame, say let's say frame 30 and I'm just going to rotate it this way. And then maybe to frame 40 and just rotate it this way so we get that just that flip motion and then on frame 100 I'm just going to set that rotation back to zero so we just moving back into that uh, position so if I play through this you will see this type of animation all right something very simple I'm going to stop that so now I'm going to export this animation as an alembic file so I'm going to select my object go to cache alembic cache and then export selection to alembic and um, now I just need to browse to a folder. I'm going to save it in my tutorial folder and I'm going to call it animation and make sure it says Alembic at the bottom. Click on export selection and it's quickly going to run through that animation as it's saving it. All right, so now we're going to jump into RealFlow and I'm going to click on file new to create a new project and let's just give it a name uh, Maya to RealFlow and then you can select the location. So I'm going to click on these little dots to browse to a location. I'm just going to save it in the tutorial folder as well. Click on choose and uh, then you can click on create new project. All right, so that's going to set it up in that folder. And now we want to ensure that the frame rate is the same as our Maya project. So right here at the bottom by simulate, click on the little arrow next to simulate and then go to options. And then you'll see your FPS output, your frames per second. So currently it is set to 30, which is perfect. And then just click on OK to confirm that. So next you want to set up your frame range and as you can see this is from 0 to 200 so I'm going to change the 200 to 100 and the same with this number. Now in real flow you can't really set this to 1. If I set this to 1 it will basically just kind of create a um, like a marker here by 1 so I'm going to leave this on 0 and I'll explain later how we actually just going to use frames 1 to 100 and we're not going to use the 0 frame. Right, so next we want to import our animation. So I'm going to go to import right at the top and click on object. And uh, then I'm going to browse to my animation.abc file, the one we exported from Maya. Then click on open. And if you scrub through this now, you'll see that we have our object and we also have the animation. So I'm going to select this object and I'm going to click on the shaded view here on the side, this little sphere, just so that we can see the geometry a little bit better. And there you have your basic animation. So now we're going to create our particle emitter. So I'm going to go to standard particles here at the top and I'm just going to create a sphere particle emitter. I'm going to move it up by pressing W, moving it up and then pressing R just to scale it down slightly, maybe something like that. 
and then with this particle uh, emitter selected I'm going to go to the properties and then I'm just going to change the density from 1000 to let's make it around 700 so it's basically a bit of a lower resolution simulation just for the purpose of this tutorial um, it will run a little bit quicker and uh, next I want to create some gravity so I'm going to go to my demon stab here at the top and then click on gravity and uh, you can just move it out you don't really have to but I like to put it here on the side and um, now we're ready to simulate so I'm going to click on simulate here at the bottom and I'm just going to let that run through okay so the simulation is finished I'm just going to quickly play through it there you can see it's actually interacting with the object it's working pretty nice so next we want to create a mesh for our particle simulation so I'm gonna go to mesh here at the top and then I'm gonna click on this drop down arrow next to particle mesh and I'm just gonna select the normal particle mesh alright so with this mesh selected make sure you're on the first frame or in this case frame zero that we're not really gonna use but it's fine and then you're gonna click this button build mesh sequence alright so this is basically gonna go through all the frames and build an alembic file sequence so I'm gonna click on this and you'll see at the bottom that it's going to start running through and it's going to start building this mesh. So now if we go to our folder where we're actually saving this project, if I open up the RealFlow folder and I go to meshes, you will see that it's starting to create all these ABC files. Each frame will basically have its own ABC file. Right, so once we have our mesh sequence, we want to combine all those ABC frames into one Alembic file. So to do that, we're going to use a little tool uh, built into RealFlow. So in RealFlow, go to Tools, and then we're going to click on Stitch Alembic Files. Uh, let me just clear this. And then you're going to click on Add, and we're going to browse to that mesh folder where it exported all those ABC files. Now, remember, we don't use frame 0, so we're going to select frame 1, Hold in shift, go all the way to frame 100, shift click on that and then click on open. So if you just expand this a bit, you can see that we starting at frame 1 right at the top, all the way down to frame 100. Okay, next you want to set an output path, so I'm just going to click on those little dots and I'm going to browse to my tutorial folder and I'm going to call this just mesh.abc. Click on save and then you click on stitch. So just give it a few seconds. Okay, you can see at the bottom it says stitching files and it's done. So now we can jump back into Maya. Okay, so in Maya, we are simply gonna go file import and we're gonna browse to our mesh.abc, the one that we stitched, click on import. And now you can see we've got our liquid simulation right here in Maya and it's actually interacting with our object and the scale is correct. So there's no need to change anything, which is pretty good. So um, if you have an issue with scrubbing your timeline or if Maya crashes, I actually had some issues with Maya 2017, you need to change your renderer or your viewport renderer to the legacy default viewport. Um, I think this is currently only a problem on the Mac version of Maya. It works fine on PC, but if you have any issues, just change it to legacy. If you can't change it here, go to Maya preferences and then go to display, scroll down, and make sure your rendering engine is set to OpenGL Legacy and not this core profile. And then just change your default viewport from viewport 2 to the legacy default viewport. And that's how easy it is to go from Maya 2017 to RealFlow and back to Maya. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Give me a thumbs up if you did. And also remember I release new visual effects tutorials every week. So be sure to click on that subscribe button for more tutorials coming soon. Thanks a lot for watching. Cheers, bye.